department chair and will probably jump back into also teaching general chemistry, which is a course that uh, over 40% of incoming Augustana students uh, will take. And then I'm gonna let Dr. Trotter introduce herself. Hi, I'm, I'm Pam Trotter and I'm one of two biochemists in the department. Um, Obviously, I teach biochemistry, but I also do teach uh, general chemistry when it's necessary, and I do teach in some non-majors courses as well. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, hopefully you guys can see the PowerPoint presentation that I'm sharing. Um, this is the PowerPoint presentation or a version of the one that we use for on-campus visit days uh, due to the pandemic we can't do uh, on-campus right now. Hopefully we get back to that uh, again when it's safe. Um, but what I'm going to do is jump right in and describe for you the three different majors that are housed in our department. There is the, uh, there are two forms of the chemistry major, uh, the kind of basic chemistry major, and then an American Chemical Society approved chemistry major, which is close uh, or similar to a bachelor's of science, and then also the biochemistry major. And um, like I said earlier, 40% of students um, or more at Augustana will go through our general chemistry sequence. Uh, chemistry is often called the central science because it informs um, physics, biology, and then all of the healthcare fields. And so um, chemistry and biochemistry prepare you very well if you were interested in pursuing um, pre-medicine, pre-veterinary health, something like that, you're going to spend a lot of time in uh, chemistry classes and chemistry labs, likely uh, taking courses in general chemistry, organic chemistry, and biochemistry. Um, but for those folks who are interested in studying chemistry and biochemistry to become chemists and biochemists, um, a lot of people will say, I remember saying the same thing myself when I was a senior and junior in high school, that I wanna be a doctor because I wanna help people. Chemists and biochemists help people also, um, they don't have practices, they don't do surgery. Um, it's not the kind of same one-on-one -on -one help that you envision when you envision being a medical professional. Um, but chemists and biochemists do help society um, in many ways, including, um, very relevant now, working on cures for diseases. Biochemists in particular play a large role in that. So do synthetic uh, organic chemists, many of the pharmaceutical compounds that um, keep us healthy and living longer um, were synthesized in a lab. They might have been isolated from nature, but organic chemists had to figure out how to make those molecules at a large enough scale so there would be enough medicine um, for everyone who needs it. Uh, right now, the energy crisis is uh, still a current and looming problem in the not very distant uh, future. Inorganic chemists, material science, which is an allied field of chemistry, polymer chemists, um, physical chemists play a big role in developing alternative energy sources. Um, a large example, uh, an important example being solar energy. Inorganic chemists, physical chemists, material scientists are making breakthroughs um, at a rapid pace there. On the more bio biological side, biochemists um, have a lot um, of insight and research they can do into improving um, the ability to um, scale up the production of biofuels, for example. Um, preserving a clean environment, our analytical and instrumental chemists play a large role here in first testing to see what kind of contaminants and what level of those contaminants are found in our environment, um, and then working with um, organic chemists, inorganic chemists, um, and maybe across disciplines with environmental scientists to figure out a way to remediate, clean up the mess um, that's been made in the environment. Um, again, instrumental analytical chemistry, but also biochemistry and um, molecular genetics. Um, if you're interested in the field of forensic science, um, completing a degree in chemistry and or biochemistry um, is going to really set you apart and give you a leg up when you're competing for positions um, in a forensic science uh, graduate program with, for example, the Illinois State Police. We've had several of our graduates um, from Augustana go on to the Illinois State Police uh, into their forensics program. Um, we've, uh, 
till recently, uh, we had a faculty member, he retired several years ago, who did some research on combating chemical warfare agents. A current faculty member, Dr. Wilmsmeyer, um, her PhD research was on detecting chemical warfare agents. Um, for obvious reasons, we can't be exposing our students to chemical warfare agents, but the lessons that Dr. Wilmsmeyer learned in infrared spectroscopy, uh, spectroscopy and surface science, um, she continues to use to this day um, helping students learn how to use those techniques to detect safer compounds. Um, for example, volatile organic compounds that someone may um, exhale and could be eventually be used as a non-invasive cancer screening tool. Um, and then through uh, polymer science and materials chemistry, um, many of the things that you deal with every day from the lowly um, polyethylene milk jug to the high-tech polymers that make up the high temperature gaskets in your car engines um, that keep uh, things running. Developing safer, stronger, less expensive commercial materials um, is all within the realm of synthetic polymer chemistry, which is an extension of organic chemistry. So um, long story short, chemists and biochemists um, do, I would argue, as much as uh, doctors, nurses, et cetera, to help society. It's just in a very uh, different way. The results that we uh, obtain in the laboratory from experiments can be developed into things um, that help human safety and health. And at the end of the day, chemists and biochemists are problem solvers. Um, like I was saying earlier, when I was in high school, I wanted to be a medical doctor, but what when I really thought hard about what I would like to do every day for the rest of my life, it's really solving problems that I enjoy. And I think any, if you ask any chemist, biochemist, any scientist really, um, to get to the core issue of what drives them, what gets them out of bed in the morning, it's solving problems. And if that's something that motivates you, that excites you, science, particularly chemistry and biochemistry, would be uh, a really strong contender, should be a strong contender as you consider uh, a major or majors. Um, places where our students end up with a chemistry or biochemistry degree, particularly, <coughs> excuse me, with biochemistry, this really helps students um, develop competitive applications for medical school, dental school, veterinary school. Um, many of the students who go from Augustana to med school are biochemistry majors. Um, graduate school, I was a first generation college student. I was the oldest of five children. I was the first person in my whole family, extended and nuclear, to go to college. And I didn't know really why on day one on campus, I was calling all these people doctor this and doctor that. Um, to me, a doctor was someone who I saw, you know, if I had a sore throat. Um, the reason uh, that we call professors at Augustana and places like that, places like it, doctor this or doctor that, is they have their PhD, their doctorate um, uh, of philosophy. So I have a PhD, a doctorate of philosophy in chemistry. Um, what it means is someone went to graduate school for typically four to six years after uh, undergraduate, after earning a bachelor's degree, to um, undertake another year or two of advanced coursework, and then another two to four years of full-time laboratory research. And when I say full-time, speaking from my personal experience, anything less than 60 hours per week in the research lab was unacceptable to my graduate <coughs> advisor. And so that sounds like a lot of hard work. You do that research throughout the calendar year. You don't get summers off. But one of the most, uh, I guess, valuable aspects of graduate school, in my opinion, again, as a first year or first generation college student was um, whereas you will likely pay to go to medical school, dental school, law school, veterinary school, graduate school um, is better than free, I would argue. So my personal uh, example, tuition would have been about $50,000 a year for the five years I was in graduate school. I never paid a penny of that. On top of that, I made about $25,000 a year, which isn't a lot. Um, but it was enough to live off of, to have an apartment, to buy groceries, to save a little bit of money besides. So at the end of five years, I graduated with my doctorate, um, my PhD, 
and I didn't have any student debt. In fact, I had been able to save a little bit of money. I was essentially getting paid $75,000 a year, 50,000 of that going right to tuition, 25,000 um, for doing the research that would eventually lead to my PhD. And so for those of you thinking about what to do after you get your bachelor's degree, you could go right into work. You could go work for a company. You could also get an education degree, teach high school. Um, lots of things you can do with a bachelor's degree in chemistry. But if you wanted to take that next step without taking on more student loan debt, graduate school is um, a really worthwhile thing to consider, particularly if, like I said on the previous slide, you're motivated by problem solving. Um, I don't want to read through the rest uh, of the slide. You can see the other outcomes that Augustana graduates have achieved. Um, pharmacy school is another common pathway uh, for students to pursue um, after earning their bachelor's degree. We've had people even go as far afield as becoming lawyers with a chemistry degree. Um, they are not super interesting to read, but you'd be amazed every time there's a new um, molecule that's invented that's going to be brought to market and sold, it's likely going to have to be patented and you're going to need an army of patent attorneys to do, write the legal language to make sure that your invention is protected for you and the company that you were working for at the time you invented it. So there's a lot of pathways open to you with the chemistry or biochemistry degree. If you like being in the lab, you can do that. If you hate being in the lab, you can go into things like technical writing, um, patent law, and even science journalism. Um, there's something you can do that should excite you with the chemistry or biochemistry degree. So getting down to brass tacks, what does a uh, chemistry and biochemistry major look like? I'll talk about the chemistry major and then I think I'll be able to pass it off to Dr. Trotter um, to talk about biochemistry. The typical four year plan for a chemistry major is uh, in year one, depending on your background from high school, um, if you took just one year of chemistry in high school, let's say, you'd start with general chemistry one in the fall semester, take general chemistry two in the spring semester. If you took any more than one year of chemistry in high school, whether it's AP or not, we would strongly encourage you to start off with introductory inorganic chemistry. We don't call it this, but it's kind of like honors Gen Chem 1. The material is a little bit more advanced than you'd see in general chemistry 1. <clears throat> it's a smaller class that gets into uh, more detail into structure and bonding than they can really get into in general chemistry. General chemistry needs to serve a wide audience. In intro inorganic chemistry makes no apologies for um, kind of focusing on what chemistry majors and biochemistry majors need to know. Um, if you went on that fast track, then you would be set up to take quantitative analysis, uh, general, or sorry, chemistry 255. So you'd be on a bit of a fast track, maybe a semester ahead, um, if you started with introductory inorganic. That being said, if you start in Gen Chem 1 and take Gen Chem 2, you're not going to be at a disadvantage. You'll still finish well within four years, as long as you make reasonable progress and listen to your academic advisors when they help you craft uh, your curriculum. Uh, your second year, almost universally, students will start with organic chemistry in their second year. You take two semesters of organic chemistry. And then once again, depending on your uh, math background from high school, you may start off with Calculus 1 and then take Calculus 2. If you have Calculus um, AB credit for the AP, you could skip out of Calculus 1 and start right with Calculus 2. And that could happen during your first year if you wanted it to. If you do calculus BC, if my memory serves, and you get, I think, an AP score of four or above, then you'd be done with your calculus requirement for chemistry. You require only one full year of calculus. Um, we do require a year of physics. We've written it down in the second year. Um, honestly, students will take it anytime from their second year up through their senior year. <clears throat> we like to see students take it earlier rather than later because it is either a 100 level or 200 level course, and it's very difficult to go back to the uh, 100 or 200 level course as a senior and stay interested. I often will joke that 
you can take physics after physical chemistry, but it would be like going back to kindergarten after finishing high school. Um, your third year is where you take the infamous physical chemistry course. Um, physical chemistry takes all the hardest parts of math and all the hardest parts of chemistry and smushes them together. Um, that's not to scare you away. It's a challenging course, um, but that's really where you learn, or at least from my personal experience, what um, hard mental labor, uh, what it feels like, and what it looks like. So your third year, you take physical chemistry, then advanced in organic chemistry. Um, inquiry in chemistry is setting you up for your senior thesis, which we call senior inquiry. This course helps uh, get you uh, familiar with the different types of journals um, and research articles that you'll encounter as you complete your senior thesis research. During your fourth year, you would take one semester of biochemistry. This is required for the chemistry major and you complete your senior thesis. Your senior thesis could either be based on work uh, you did in a laboratory the summer prior to your senior year, uh, laboratory work you do during your senior year, or um, during your senior year, you could come up with an idea completely on your own and propose how you might um, do that or execute that research. The senior inquiry, whatever the flavor you choose, um, results in a minimum, I'd say 20 page paper, your senior thesis, and a um, ideally 45 minute plus or minus 15 minute presentation um, on the results of your work, talking about uh, the information contained in your thesis. On this slide, this is what we call the um, I guess basic chemistry major. If you wanted the um, American Chemical Society certified chemistry major, there'd be one or two more courses in addition to the ones listed on this slide you need. You would need to take instrumental analysis. It's a 400, so senior level course where you get to work with really high end um, chemistry uh, analysis instrumentation. And we would all also strongly encourage a second semester of physical chemistry, which focuses on quantum mechanics. That would be the ACS certified major, ACS standing for the American Chemical uh, Society. That's kind of the governing body of chemistry in the United States. And it's essentially the equivalent of a bachelor's of science. I believe the next slide talks about biochemistry. So I'm going to rest my voice, I think, and hand it over to Dr. Trotter to talk about uh, the biochemistry major. So the uh, biochemistry major has a lot of the similar themes that the chemistry major. So the opportunity to either take uh, the Gen Chem sequence, Gen Chem 1 and Gen Chem 2, or uh, the fast track that Dr. Domsky talked about, the inter inorganic or qu and quantitative analysis in the first year. Also in the first year, um, there's a course called Biology 130 or Molecules to Cells. It's the equivalent of a cell biology course. Uh, that you'll need as sort of the gateway to any of the uh, biology sort of related things that you'd have to take. Uh, as with the chemistry major, biochemistry majors also take organic chemistry in the second year. Uh, so organic chemistry one and two, and you'll notice calculus is also there, uh, very similar to uh, the chemistry major. And uh, the same rules for AP credit and that sort of thing hold for biochemistry as well. You will notice though that uh, physics is not present in our recommended uh, curriculum in the second year because we'd like you to work on the biology. So if you don't um, get molecules to cells in that first year, you have another chance in the second year. And then we also recommend that you take the genetics requirement in the second year. Um, both molecules to cells and uh, genetics are offered both semesters. So they don't necessarily have to be in the specific places they are here in this sample schedule. Um, Quantitative analysis is also required. Um, we recommend taking it in the second year, although um, you can move it to the third year if necessary. Um, then uh, in the third year is when you really get down to the biochemistry itself. Uh, biochemistry one, which the chemistry majors also have to take, is a, a large lecture course. So all of the pre-health majors also have to take that course. And so um, that course is a lecture course alone. There is no laboratory connected to it. But the biochemistry two, which is offered in the spring, is required for the majors. Um, that also has a lab requirement. Um, and that's where we really get into uh, the 
the depth that biochemistry has. And um, by the end of that spring uh, semester of biochemistry too, you really uh, are deep into the literature of biochemistry and um, we have lots of discussions in that course and get you a chance to learn what's new. Um, every year we have a, a discussion about what the latest uh, Nobel Prize was and that sort of thing. And so it gets us a chance to really get into the details of biochemistry. Um, we recommend the physics sequence in the third year, although there are a few people who have taken it their senior year, but I think the third year is the best place to put it. And then the inquiry in chemistry, which once again is the, the pre-course for the senior thesis. Um, we do require the physical chemistry course that Dr. Domsky described, just the first semester of that. And uh, senior inquiry, uh, the three options that he pointed out, uh, you can do research uh, at the, uh, in the bench in the lab, uh, either with uh, a faculty member on campus or if you happen to do a research experience off campus, we can arrange for that to count as well. Or you can do that proposal option that he mentioned. Um, we also, in addition to uh, molecules to cells and genetics, require one upper level biology elective. Uh, this biology elective, uh, we have a long list of courses that will satisfy it, but just to give you kind of a feel for it, any of the physiology courses will count for that. Uh, microbiology counts for that. We have a cancer biology course as well. Um, and we have a signaling course. And so if it's a course of 300 level or above and it has a, a molecular uh, focus in the biology department, um, most of those will count for that biology elective. Um, so as uh, Dr. Domsky pointed out, most of the students that do this uh, curriculum, um, I would say about half of them are going to go into uh, medical school or dental school or vet veterinary school. And then we have a, a good percentage that also uh, go on to graduate school in the molecular sciences, uh, anywhere from uh, genetics to immunology to biochemistry or, or even synthetic organic chemistry that has to do with biochemistry. So uh, a big breadth of uh, preparation using this curriculum. One last thing I would say before I turn it back over to Dr. Domsky is that uh, if, if you're interested in pre-med or pre-dent or pre-vet or any of those sorts of things, you'll find if you look at that curriculum that it overlaps a lot with the biochemistry curriculum. And so it's very, very common for students to double major in biology and biochemistry or pre-med and biochemistry. So, um, and we are used to working out the, the kinks for those sorts of uh, double majors as well. And that's a fantastic segue. Um, Aaron uh, had a question in the messaging feature of Zoom, and the question was, to get the biochemistry major, do you have to do a senior inquiry if you are also pre-med? The answer is yes. Every Augustana student has to do at least one senior inquiry. Um, <coughs> and for biochemistry um, and pre-med, the pre-med major will accept the biochemistry senior inquiry is also completing their senior inquiry requirement. So uh, the short answer is if you were to major in biochemistry and pre-med, yes, you would have to complete a biochemistry uh, senior inquiry. But if you chose to do a uh, senior inquiry in biology, it would not necessarily count for biochemistry. So it would depend on the situation. Right, yes, there are some departments who will accept other department senior inquiry um, chemistry and biochemistry, um, I, I think we've got good reasons. Um, we expect our students to complete a senior inquiry project that has significant component of chemistry and or biochemistry in it. Being so closely allied with pre-medicine, the pre-medicine folks would find a biochemistry SI acceptable. All right. That was a good question. Um, so one of the things that we lose out on uh, with the uh, virtual meeting is normally we would take you on a tour of the chemistry department and show you all of the awesome equipment that we have. <coughs> um, right now, I'll just list for you um, on several slides that we do have a really impressive array of equipment, especially given that Augustana is what they call a primarily undergraduate institution. We only teach students 
who are first years, sophomores, juniors, and seniors in college. We don't have graduate students. And so what that means is you will always have someone um, with the terminal degree in their field, I should say almost always, um, have someone with a PhD teaching you. You will not have a graduate student teaching you ever at Augustana. And in addition to that, you won't have to compete with graduate students to get research experience and to get your hands on these really um, exciting <coughs> and cutting edge instruments. And so uh, the big ones I'll point out to you, um, let's see if my cursor is working. Um, we have several infrared spectrometers. If you've ever watched any of these forensic science shows, um, you've probably seen uh, Fourier transform infrared spectrometers being used. They're used quite a bit to um, determine the, the composition of um, plastics in particular for trace uh, evidence analysis. In organic chemistry, so as a sophomore, you'll use this instrument almost every single lab period. If you were to go on and do research with Dr. Wilmsmeyer, who I mentioned earlier, <coughs> you would use a super cutting edge tricked out um, infrared spectrometer to work on her uh, research projects. Um, let's see, if you were working with Dr. Biggin, you'd make um, heavy use of the high performance liquid uh, chromatograph and the gas chromatograph um, to quantify, um, Dr. Trier can jump in and tell me if I'm wrong, um, but uh, fatty acids um, that are generated through a collaborative project between Dr. Trotter, who's a biochemist, and Dr. Biggin, who's an analytical chemist. Dr. Biggin's also starting a new research project quantifying and identifying uh, components in CBD oil using um, gas chromatography um, and high performance liquid chromatography. And that is supposed to kick off uh, either this summer or next academic year. Uh, if you were doing work in my lab, um, you'd have access to two Schlenk lines. They don't sound interesting, but they are pretty cool. Um, I was just explaining to my eight-year-old son um, the other day that using the Schlenk lines and the glove box in my laboratory, you can work with a compound that if you open the jar on the table in front of you right now, it would spontaneously combust. But by using a Schlenk line, it keeps that material under a blanket of ultra pure, ultra dry nitrogen gas. Same thing with the glove box that keeps pyrophoric um, volatile uh, chemicals from exploding. So you can do some pretty cutting edge chemistry in my synthetic organometallic uh, research lab. Um, in my opinion, the kind of crown jewel of the chemistry department is the 400 megahertz nuclear magnetic resonance spectrometer. It is literally an MRI uh, for molecules. Um, being 400 megahertz, it costs about $400,000. I think that that is almost certainly the most expensive scientific instrument on campus. And you would start using this as a sophomore, once again, in organic chemistry laboratory. <clears throat> and then if you were working with Dr. Bokeen, um, Dr. Jensen, or myself on synthetic uh, chemistry research, you would use this $400,000 instrument on an almost daily basis. Um, anytime you make a new molecule, you're going to subject it to NMR. Um, and I think that those, those are the big uh, chemistry instrumentation um, uh, that I wanted to point out to you. I'm going to let Dr. Trotter uh, talk you through uh, what they have in terms of uh, biochemistry equipment, which is also a really impressively well-equipped uh, laboratory. So one of the things I'll say about the biochemistry laboratories is we have some of the best views on campus if you look out the window. Um, and uh, Dr. Uh, Patrick Crawford and I share a research laboratory and then we also have a teaching laboratory. And basically, if you can think of a, a biomolecule kind of experiment that you might wanna do, we can do it. Um, and so uh, some of the things that are on this list that are perhaps, um, I don't know, maybe, the ultra low temperature minus 80 freezer might not seem so important to you at the surface, but it turns out that many biomolecules, if you put them in a regular freezer, uh, would probably be inactive tomorrow. Uh, but if you put them in the, just a little bit colder in this minus 80 freezer, you can keep them uh, for a long period of time. I have some uh, cell samples from uh, 1996, yes, 
older than most of you. And so um, this minus 80 freezer is probably our most valuable, even though it wasn't the most expensive thing, because it allows us to store those samples. And so right now, even though I can't go to campus, I know my samples are okay because they're in that freezer. Um, and most of these other things are, are just standard equipment that you would have in any kind of biochemistry laboratory uh, to allow you to do uh, the typical biochemistry kinds of things. Um, one of the things on this list that you may hear about if you're interested in uh, testing for uh, COVID, for example, is uh, thermal cyclers. So like the fourth or fifth thing down there on the list, we have two thermal cyclers for polymerase chain reaction in our laboratory. And that is the instrument that they're using uh, to uh, test for that virus right now. And so um, it, we could actually, if we had the certifications to work with viruses in the lab, could actually uh, do those sorts of experiments. Um, Dr. Crawford and I uh, both work in uh, molecular sorts of things. He works on uh, antibiotics and, and studies the uh, enzymes that metabolize antibiotics that are expressed in bacteria. And I'm interested in um, the, basically the, the connections between the various different metabolic pathways, uh, both uh, carbohydrate, amino acids and uh, fat metabolism. And I use uh, various different uh, uh, microbes as uh, s systems for studying that. Um, I think that's about all I need to say there, Greg. All right, that sounds good. Um, we've got about 10 minutes left. So if you guys do have questions, you wanna start typing them in the messaging bar. I wanna make sure we have time to get to those. Um, let's see if this is going to, let me advance the slide. Okay. Um, double skipped slides. So research opportunities. One of the things that's different about Augustana now than when I was a student at Augustana, I didn't mention that, I usually do at the beginning. I graduated from Augustana in 2003. And at that time, if you wanted to get to use any of this type of instrumentation, um, <clears throat> you needed to go somewhere else to do that. And so I spent my summers doing research at Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois. Um, but while I was in graduate school earning my PhD, Augustana, there was a bit of a culture shift uh, with the new president, uh, pre who's our current president, Steve Balls, um, really wanted senior inquiry. They wanted all Augustana students doing research. So senior inquiry is now required. It used to be something when I was a student that only like the honors or the ultra motivated students did. And to help facilitate that, <coughs> we have something called Augie Choice, which is $2,000 of your money um, that you get to use to uh, either travel to conferences, to supplement your income if you're staying on campus or going uh, to a different university to research over the summer. Um, it basically lowers the financial barrier to getting these hands-on research experiences that you need um, typically to complete your senior inquiry. On campus, um, you can do research during the academic year, um, really with as busy as you guys are going to be between sports and music and your other courses. During the academic year, doing between four to eight hours per week in the lab <clears throat> is about what we feel like we can um, reasonably ask from you. But even that, you can make decent progress on a research project during the academic year. During the summer, somewhere between six to 10 weeks, um, we will often work with one to two students per faculty member, one-on-one, -on -one, hands-on, training you guys how to use these high-tech pieces of equipment and instrumentation, and using those pieces of equipment and instrumentation to test hypotheses, to do experiments that likely no one has ever done before, to create new knowledge. And this eventually leads, um, in most scenarios, either to a presentation at a local or national um, biochemistry or chemistry conference, or can lead to peer-reviewed publications, which I'll talk about in a moment. We have a lot of off-campus opportunities as well, internships with either government research labs, um, large company companies like AbbVie, Abbott, Pfizer, things like that, or the National Science Foundation Research Experience for Undergraduates program. Um, that's highly competitive, but that's um, how I was able to go to Northwestern for a few summers as an undergraduate to do research. Um, we do have a special agreement with Texas Medical Center and Baylor College of Medicine. A 
a lot of our biochemistry majors take advantage of that program where they uh, commit to taking um, a certain number of Augustana students every summer and allowing them to do cutting edge research either at Texas Medical Center or Baylor, Baylor College of uh, Medicine. Um, just a few examples. <laughs> We've had um, several recent uh, publications. Um, the students highlighted in red are, uh, were undergraduate students at Augustana who did research that was worthy of publication in peer reviewed journals, journals that people all over the world read um, about the results of the experiments that these students did at Augustana. Um, and so you'll see that Dr. Trotter has had several recently. Um, I've had uh, a recent publication with three students. Interestingly, all three of these students were in my first year advising group, assigned to me completely at random. They somehow turned out to be chemistry or biochemistry majors and do research with me. So I thought that was kind of um, funny. It struck me as I was submitting the papers like, oh yeah, these were all um, just randomly assigned first year advising students <coughs> who became my research colleagues. Um, and Dr. Bokeen, also very active with synthetic organic chemistry. So the research you guys will be doing at Augustana leads to presentations at large conferences and publications in important research journals, which um, besides being really cool in and of itself, builds your resume and strengthens your application for graduate school, for medical school, for veterinary school. For example, Alexa Gitsakis, um, she was a biochemistry major, I think also a chemistry major. She went to veterinary school. So nothing she does now has anything to do with ruthenium and iridium, um, but the research experience uh, was very, very helpful and, and set her apart because she was applying for veterinary school. Um, and then I will just end here by saying that I think the biggest most valuable thing or aspect of an Augustana um, education, it certainly was for my Augustana education, is the connections that you make with your fellow students, your fellow chemistry and biochemistry majors, but the connections you make with faculty. Um, I would be in a very different place in my life right now, and I don't know that it would be a happier or better place um, if I hadn't gone to Augustana and started asking around and asking the really silly, naive question, why are why do I call you doctor this or doctor that? And learning about graduate school and learning that it was better than free. Um, <clears throat> I would have never considered a PhD if it hadn't been for the mentorship and the access I had to PhD level scientists as an Augustana undergraduate. And so we'll just end with a few outtakes from research summers past. These are students in my research lab playing uh, with the Schlank line, working with some um, pretty interesting, dangerous chemicals in a safe environment. We've got uh, one of Dr. Trotter's groups, uh, research groups from quite a while ago. Dr. Trotter can jump in here. Um, I know Max Peterson. He's he um, MD, PhD. At yes, Yale? he's an MD, PhD. He's working in the hospital at Mass General Hospital in Boston now. And Alex in the middle there is in medical school in Indianapolis. All right, so I will quiet down. I'm just gonna keep my eyes on the message board um, or the, the group chat feature to see if you guys have any other questions. And if Dr. Trotter wanted to add anything, I'm at the end, but before we get cut off, I just wanna thank you guys for making time uh, to listen to us today, um, to Aaron for asking a really uh, insightful question. And uh, if you guys have any questions about chemistry or biochemistry at Augustana, um, Bonnie has put our contact information, our email addresses, feel free to email and we will get back to you as soon as we possibly can. I had another question from Aaron. Should we go for the chemistry, biochemistry or biology for the pre-med? That is um, a, another really good question. So Augustana is a rare college in that we actually have a bachelor's degree called pre-medicine. Um, you cannot get a batch, you cannot get a pre-medicine and biology degree. That is not allowed. There's too much overlap between those two to be considered a genuine double major. And so what a lot of our students will do is do biochemistry. And then I think it differs only one more course. I think you have to take botany um, to get the uh, pre-med degree. So many, many, many students 
will do biochemistry and pre-med. So you'll graduate with two degrees. Um, so my advice from a student who wants to go to medical school would be to major in biochemistry and pre-med. Um, you could also do chemistry and pre-med, but there's a lot more overlap and you get a lot more of that relevant um, biology coursework done um, when completing the biochemistry major um, than if you just did chemistry. I don't know if Dr. Trotter has anything she wants to add to that. No, I, I agree, that's, that's true. Especially if you really like chemistry, um, doing the biochemistry with pre-med makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and if I'm, I'll be really, really candid and upfront. The big difference between biology and biochemistry is in biochemistry, you've got to take more math. Bio, uh, for pre-med, you don't need, even need calculus anymore. I don't think any med schools that I know of require calculus. <clears throat> and so if you're not afraid of a little bit of extra math, and then you'll also be taking physical chemistry. That is something that a biochemistry major has to take that a um, bio major <clears throat> does not. That being said, when you are applying for medical school and they're looking at your application, I'm, I believe that they look on it favorably if they see a student who's not afraid of taking some academic risks and putting themselves through the tougher coursework required for a biochemistry major. Well, that's all, we, that's all the time we have. So again, I want to thank you all for joining us. Uh, thank you again, uh, Drs. Domsky and Trotter. We appreciate your time. Uh, hope all you guys have a great week, and hopefully we'll see you guys on campus sometime soon. All right, and if you guys do have more questions after this, they come up later, you can email Dr. Trotter and or myself, and we will get right back to you, all right? Have yep. a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.